Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 11, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week. Without a doubt, big moves happening in the sky now. And this is a very special time. Now, the very big news is what takes place as we move towards the end of the week. It is as we navigate this week that we feel the energies becoming more and more pronounced. On the one hand, a reality check that may not necessarily feel easy, but necessary. And what we also have is a lot of emotion coming forward, but getting mixed up with ideas and gossip and mind. And so let's start with Saturn going retro. Now, when astrologers look at the sky, we look at the exact position, the exact placement of where a planet is when it stands still, when it goes retro. The zodiac consists of 360 degrees, and each sign takes up 30 degrees out of that 360 degrees, making 12 signs to go all the way around the zodiac. It is at seven degrees of Pisces that Saturn will station retro. And this becomes intriguing in a few different ways. So one is, well, this is the first station we've had uh, of Saturn in the sign of Pisces. Saturn standing still at the height of its power, closer to the Earth than it might otherwise be, going back to the mid-90s. In fact, the last time Saturn was exactly where he is right now, well, it was as we were finishing 1994 and starting 1995. Now, I know for some of us, it's going to feel like we're really going way back, more than it might for others. But yeah, in some way, what is taking place may be reminiscent of or feel like it reminds us in some way or furthers lessons of what was happening all the way back then. And that's why you may know when I speak about Saturn, I talk about how once Saturn moves on, it won't return for well over two decades. Well, this is what I mean. That's what it looks like. Practically speaking, well over two decades was actually almost three decades is the mid 90s, the last time that Saturn was in the sign of Pisces. And so with Saturn standing still now, it represents a real moment of truth, moment of honesty. Saturn represents, on the one hand, wisdom, but it's wisdom that we've earned and wisdom that comes from being honest with ourselves, even when it's hard. It is the principle of sacrifice and how it is that if we sacrifice for our higher needs or aims or goals, well, that is a very powerful way to cultivate meaningful self-respect in the process. Now, being honest with yourself isn't just about success and career and the goals you have related to it. Of course, it can relate to just about any area of life. In fact, all of us in at least one area of life are going to find that we have to accept some truth, honestly evaluate and figure out the best way forward. With Saturn, where it is that we take responsibility Accept what's ours, but also surrender what is not. Accept that there are certain things we don't have power over, and we're going to surrender those to the universe, that balance that we find. That's where Saturnian lessons can bring forward, well, let's call it a sweet spot, if you will, right? That's when we start working with Saturn to our advantage. And that is part of the invitation now under this sky. It's an opportunity to tap into what healthy maturity looks like for us, taking responsibility mainly for our happiness. That's a big Saturnian theme. But also recognizing what's not ours to take on, where it is perhaps we're taking on too much. Now that might be responsibility for other people, for the dynamics of other people, for how other people act. That might be related to something that seems more personal, but actually might not be how it is you feel like someone may be behaving towards you or not. It is Saturn station retro that invites a level of truth, a level of contemplation as well. Saturn is the ancient ruler of Aquarius and 
Of course, the energy of Aquarius has had a lot of attention paid to it. As of late, first, we had for about three years Saturn moving through Aquarius. Then we had earlier this year, well, it was Pluto moving through Aquarius. And as I spoke of last week, it is at the very end of last week or the very beginning of this week, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, that is when we have Pluto retrograding out of the sign of Aquarius. And so Saturn being ancient ruler of Aquarius, this sign having to do with freedom and progress and free thinking, going your own way, but also looking at the facts, whether that's the facts of your life, the facts of what other people are showing you or the facts of who you really are and what you really want. The big lesson of Saturn with its ancient rulership of Aquarius is that freedom comes through responsibility, not from responsibility. And I think a part of that is how Saturn is connected to self-respect. Because when it is that we tap into that energy of self-respect, well, there's a type of freedom that can be found there that is not easy to shake. It's something that no one can take from us. Earlier this week, I posted a conversation with Celeste Brooks. And in this conversation, she was talking to me about Pluto and Aquarius, but also Saturn in Pisces and how especially these energies together, but even just considering Saturn and Pisces, it's like, what is real? That is the question that we're grappling with. And with Pluto and Aquarius adding that virtual reality element into the mix, the AI element into the mix, well, it becomes that much harder to grasp. And I think with the Saturn station, as much as Saturn station has to do with looking at the truth where maybe we didn't want to see it before. And it's also about looking at what's real in a way that maybe we didn't want to look at before. It's still Saturn in Pisces, which means that part of this sense of awareness might be rooted in the fact that we didn't really know what was real. And maybe we feel that we also now are not really sure what could be real and what might not be. And so a lot of this comes down to a question, which is what response, what course of action, what decisions can you make that fuel healthy self-respect, but also genuine grounded happiness, the kind of happiness that doesn't come from promises and wishes and hopes and belief, which is beautiful, right? That is the hope of and uh, the sense of possibility that comes with Jupiter, for example. That's not what we have here. But rather, what we have here is the kind of genuine hope that comes from admitting what you know and also accepting that maybe there are things you don't know. And then doing the best of your ability to know what it is that you decide to choose and to choose consciously based on the evidence that you have. Again, that might be tricky for some of us, but it is a pathway to self-knowledge, self-understanding, but also genuine self-respect that can end up being deeply meaningful to us now and navigating forward from here. Now, interestingly, both Jupiter and Saturn are active in the sky this week. In particular, on Sunday, Venus will align with Jupiter in a conversation of tension and then two days later will align with Saturn in a quick moving type of conversation that very quickly asks us to look at the truth of what we are desiring, what we believe is going to give us joy and what it is we're actually understanding, what the evidence is actually showing us. That Jupiterian energy that we start the week with is rather intriguing. It's a square, as astrologers call it. And I see this Venus square Jupiter as overdoing it, overestimation, overshooting the mark. Now, depending on your worldview, that might not be a big deal, and that's fine. But especially where it comes to Venus, we're looking at matters having to do uh, with beauty, with pleasure, with love as well. And Considering that we're not in Venus shadow just yet, 
just know that if it is at the beginning of the week, uh, in the first half of the week even, you are looking towards beauty treatments, tattoos, piercings, all that kind of good stuff um, to amplify your unique beauty as you understand it, you may need to check some of your expectations, especially the earlier we are in the week, because it's almost like we're going to have a little bit of a reality check there that we might have to very quickly uh, incorporate or integrate. Now, it may have to do as well with what we want to spend money on, and that includes and especially includes something that we think helps us to magnify our own unique fabulousness, right? For all that, though, there is that need to honestly evaluate what's going on, why you want it, uh, what the practical steps are, but also to contemplate what a higher expression of your unique beauty might be for you and where it feels right to practice patience. That can go a very long way. Now, that's easier said than done. I know I have moon conjunct Venus in my chart. I love all that stuff. And yet this is a moment to take a little bit of a step back and evaluate. That moment may come on very quickly, but also can find resolution quickly. Love can be a part of this. Overshooting the mark or our expectations, especially, or interpreting how something's playing out with another person, maybe interpreting it as uh, not as favorable as it is or way more favorable than it is. Now, a saving grace with Venus really comes thanks to Mercury. And Mercury's on a journey of its own this week. At the very beginning of the week, Mercury will align in supreme harmony with Pluto just before he leaves Taurus and enters the sign of Gemini. On Thursday, Mercury will speak with Saturn in a conversation of tension, but will end the week speaking in harmony with Venus. So you can see here, there's this journey of Mercury connecting with other power players. That connection with Venus is especially intriguing. Even though we left the larger Mercury retrograde season a couple weeks back, um, this alignment is actually the third time these two planets are connecting as part of that larger dance. During the larger Mercury retrograde season, Mercury aligned with Venus twice in harmony. Now, with Mercury direct, gaining that much more power, traction, and brand new territory, he's going to make this final harmonious alignment that astrologers call a sextile. And I feel like this is clarity. That's what this represents. Mercury in its home sign of Gemini is all about mind and spontaneity and free thought and conversation. And it's about feeling that much more connected to other people on a level of, well, siblings, right? It is Gemini that is the sign of the twins. And well, the twins are always looking for each other. Gemini is always looking for its twin. And that becomes part of a key theme whenever we have important energy in the sign of Gemini. And so how does that Venus energy that earlier in the week um, isn't necessarily the easiest flow of energy, right? With that square to Jupiter, with the quincunx of Saturn. Well, by the time we get to the end of the week, we're thinking things through, we're talking things out, and we're making plans. It is through mind that the heart clarifies what it really wants. But we also get a chance to make a plan to navigate forward from here. Now, the other massively important celestial event to take place this week is going to be the fact that we have a new moon in the sign of Gemini as well, right? There's Mercury. The twins are awakening. And here we get a new moon awakening, new twin, new sibling, new brethren types of connections with other people. Uh, this new moon is rather fascinating. Now, technically, it will either take place very late on Saturday in the western parts of the Americas. However, once we get to the eastern time zone of Toronto, of New York, and further east from that all the way to Australia, well, that's when we are in Sunday, the very beginning of next week. But because there are going to be friends of men that experience this energy Saturday, and that is the dark of the moon. That's the thing also to remember, you know, when it comes to new moon energies, um, I find that it can be the buildup that's important, but the buildup to it really is the dark of the moon. It's about 
inner understandings, inner mysteries, um, what is taking place on those levels of spirit will eventually give way to the new beginnings promised by that new moon. But with new moons, sometimes you got to wait a day or two after they are exact for the light of the moon to begin to reveal itself, the crescent moon, if you will, normally about 18 hours after uh, that new moon is exact. That is when we start to have that sense of newness that much more as the light of the moon begins to be revealed and we move that much more and more in the days ahead uh, as the moon continues to wax and increase in light for the following two weeks. Okay, having said that, this is a new moon in Gemini. And so the whole idea of brethren, of siblings, of twins is magnified that much more. But here's the thing. This new moon is speaking in a conversation of tension with Neptune. And that makes it a little tricky um, because it is important to be mindful of heightened expectations um, and where it is perhaps that Things are not as clear as they seem. Confusion can be a part of this. But I would also say wasting a lot of energy, including mind level energy, can be part of this time. I was having this wonderful conversation with my dear friend, Michael Barwick, that you've seen on my channel before. And Michael and I were talking about this and it was like this, this theme kept coming up. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. I hope damned does is not a bad word, but okay, I have a Sag moon. I don't care. I just don't want that to be an issue with you guys, but okay. Yeah, it can be that kind of feeling. Like on the one hand, you're having great ideas and you want to move forward with them. But on the other hand, it may feel either way too much. Uh, it can be a time when you feel eager to begin, but then you're getting mixed messages or mixed promises or false promises from other people to the point where you don't know what's real what to trust, who to trust, including your own ideas as well. Getting way too carried away on an idea is possible, but at the same time, not even engaging in the idea at all is a type of loss as well. This new moon is one that I did speak of for every sign in the monthly horoscope. So make sure if you are so inspired to review the horoscope for your sign for this month of June up on my YouTube channel now. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It's a valuable and meaningful astrological moment. Well, I am going to say I love how the energy in many ways inspires and delights. And it's ultimately an energy that invites us to be truly present. But the way that we become invited to be present is by realizing where it is we aren't being present. It is all that interesting Saturnian energy that, like a thud, invites us to come back to ourselves, even if it's hard and even if the reality of reality itself brings with it mixed feelings or, for a small number of people out there, some disappointment. And yet there's strength to be found in that space. And it truly is when it is that we're able to honor all the varying needs that we have as human beings, acknowledge that we have different parts of ourselves, and when we tap into each of them, we live that much more in a balanced way. Well, from that perspective, we don't get caught up in our fears. We don't get too caught up in the mental gymnastics we might be making now or our own disappointment or own heightened expectations the promises we're making that maybe as we're making them, we're not sure we can even keep at all, but rather strive to, as they say, stay grounded, right? And what does that mean? It means to stay embodied, to stay present with yourself. And the present is where the power is. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm so incredibly grateful for you. Thank you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, 
consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. I am thrilled to present for the fourth year in a row uh, my summer school at Kepler College, the world-renowned Kepler College. And this class is called YouTube for Astrologers or Spiritual Entrepreneurship. It is the only business class that I teach once a year. Now, there's only a little bit of the first part of the first class that specifically focuses in on astrology. If you want a deeper dive into understanding astrology for business, well, there are wonderful courses that the one and only Stormy Grace has done for Synchronicity University in the past. And so be on the lookout for, just giving you a little bit of a heads up, yeah, she's going to be coming back. And so we'll see about getting some of those courses uh, available to more people out there. But having said that, on my end, this is very focused on practical details. And yes, we have the astrology, but it really is about mentorship and helping you to succeed in spiritual entrepreneurship. Class sizes are very small. It's always that way. And this class always sells out. Uh, I do want to be straightforward uh, about that. And thank you so much to all of you who've trusted me in the past and continue to. I keep this connection with Kepler College because it really is perhaps the most world-renowned astrological institute in the world. Um, incredibly respected, accredited, uh, a wonderful school to be a part of. And so, yes, this course is only offered through Kepler College only once a year. They're the ones who administer it. Um, there is a student portal that you can access so that we keep the conversation going and the connection going. It's presented as a meeting, not a webinar. So it's not that you're looking at me talking, but rather we are all together and we're communicating together and questions and interactions and learning happens in real time as we create a safe space among a small group together and we walk this journey together. Until June 22nd, Kepler has... Uh, reduced pricing. And the class starts July 6. There's always a waiting list after uh, afterwards because, or before that deadline happens, because the class does always fill up. So once again, to learn more about this course, to sign up, to inquire, uh, all of that information is available directly on the Kepler College website. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University has some incredible programs coming this July. You've got just a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, an unheard of rate for these massively far reaching superstar astrologers. I'm so happy to celebrate with you at synchronicityuniversity.com. I'm going to start with the one and only Christopher. Renstrom, superstar astrologer, uh, celebrated and read far and wide. Uh, he is someone to watch and he is someone to learn from as well. Author of several best-selling books. Well, what's wonderful about Christopher's course is that it is oriented around how to read a chart. And he helps you to understand how he approaches a chart as a master astrologer and dive into the most important symbols that are there. It is a step-by-step -step approach to reading a chart. I can promise you, knowing Christopher, having attended talks of his in person over the years, uh, having been friends with him for over 10 years now, 11 years, I'll tell you, I can promise you that if you take this course, you will come away a better astrologer. That I am certain of. The way in which he helps you to understand his methodology, but also the richness of the symbols that are there. It is just so special and wonderful. Now, currently my own class just wrapped up called Back to Our Roots. That's a foundational look at chart reading. And Christopher has been very mindful to keep up with that class because he didn't want to repeat any of that information. So you can learn more about that class, my own class, of course, at synchronicityuniversity.com. But the great thing is that if you did take my class, which a bunch of you did, so thank you so much for that. Yeah, that information won't be repeated. And Christopher certainly has his own methodology and own approach and will help you to understand the richness with which to approach reading a chart. You've got a couple of weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class to learn from the one and only 
Christopher Renstrom at SynchronicityUniversity.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents Taylor Schuler. I am so excited about this class oriented around life purpose, a very hot topic, something that astrologers love to engage. This is a five-week course just on answering that life purpose question in the astrology chart. Now, Taylor is incredible. Uh, if you saw my interview with her, and if you didn't, you really should, because you'll learn so much in that interview. But I'll tell you, she is so ready. She's so professional. Uh, she is already in her career an award-winning astrologer. And she is someone to learn from, that's for sure. And so she has her own unique approach in helping you to understand life purpose. But I can say that you will come away with deeper insights into what your unique life purpose just might be. And it'll be taught in a way that is engaging and enlightening and uh, truly brilliant. Uh, she has this way of communicating that uh, really does stand out to me. And I'm so glad to have her teaching at Synchronicity University. So again, learn from the one and only Taylor Schuler. As low as just $5 a class, you've got just a few weeks left to take advantage of that very, very low rate at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University presents an incredible July 2023 speaker series. And this time, it just so happens that all of our speakers are women, a powerhouse of women here, and wonderful topics as well. I'm going to start with our superstar astrologer for this session. It is the one and only Christine Skinner. She is back. Her talk before was so highly rated. Students absolutely loved it. And she gives you real tools, real skills that you can incorporate right away to understand money in your chart. She is one of the leading world astrologers in financial astrology. She's written several books, all oriented towards financial astrology. So that is her expertise. And this is all about astro money management, tapping into prosperity, but also how it is to understand money, direct your money uh, as part of tapping into your birth chart and also tapping into certain trends, collective, but in your chart as well. You will learn a lot about prosperity, abundance, and practical ways in which to engage astrology and money together. Very special class. Now, what we also have is another superstar, Becca Tarnas. Becca is amazing. Uh, she has been out there teaching for a while. I've admired her work. I had the chance to actually work with her very briefly on another project a couple of years ago, and I'm so excited and grateful that she is now coming to Synchronicity University. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful class. It's all about helping you to understand how to tap into an ephemeris to understand transits happening in your chart. And so before we had computer programs way back in the day, what astrologers had was something called an ephemeris. And this is basically a printout of what the planets are doing at any given time, any given day. Normally you see the ephemeris and it's calculated for noon GMT time and they have ephemerises for different time zones as well. But basically, you can track the planets. You see exactly where a planet is out of 360 degrees. What is the exact placement of that planet on a given day? You'll be able to use an ephemeris, read an ephemeris, and understand how those transits are related to your own birth chart. That's what she's going to be teaching you in this very rewarding class. And in many ways, it's almost like viscerally getting back to our roots as astrologers, right? Because this is what we did for th literally thousands of years. This is what we did is that we looked at an ephemeris or before thousands of years before we actually watch the sky ourselves, but we watch the sky so much over thousands of years that we understand the cycles of the planets. We understand when it is that they're going to retrograde, when it is that they're going to be direct, uh, what sign they're going to move in at any given time. And so now we really can track these things as part of larger cycles going centuries and centuries into the future. So yes, you can look at what's happening in your chart, either in the past when something important happened and you don't need a computer program to do it, to look at what's coming up for you. She's going to teach you that skill.
Pamela Quinn is amazing and she's going to be looking at Saturn in astrology uh, and how it is to really understand how to direct the Saturn archetype. And so Saturn is one of those energies and I would say just about any planetary energy if you're not actively engaging it consciously, well, sometimes it can feel like, well, it just shows up and does things and you don't like those things. And there was a whole bunch of things that could be possible. And now here's something that was one of the possibilities and it's more undesirable than other possibilities, right? Well, the way in which you tap into the energy of a planet is conscious. It's your actions, yes, but other ways in which you might honor the need for that energy to be acknowledged for you. So with Saturn, right? Saturn is about responsibility. It's about practicality. It's about wisdom. So many things I discussed earlier in this video. Well, how are you going to honor that? How are you going to serve Saturn so that Saturn works to your advantage? That is part of what Pamela is going to be exploring here. I think this is going to be not just a rewarding class, but it is a class that is going to help you to make sure that you like what Saturn is doing for you as much as possible. And you're able to tap into Saturnian energy for your advantage because there are a lot of advantages to be gained by doing so. Self-respect being only one of some of the things we talked about earlier in this video. Celeste Brooks, I love. She is an up and coming astrologer and she's going to be looking at forecasting uh, using eclipses. Now, eclipses are a very powerful way and powerful energies to tap into for prediction, especially because the eclipses involve the nodes of the moon. And whereas the planets, for the most part, involve what we want, why we want it, how we go about getting it, they're energies we consciously direct. Um, the nodes speak to what the soul desires to do with this lifetime. Collectively, the collective soul at a given moment, but also personally as well. When the nodes are activated, whether the nodes are transiting your chart or your own nodes in your natal chart are receiving a transit, it tends to suggest events that are karmic, that are fated, uh, and they tend to be very valuable where it comes to prediction. And so with eclipses, things can just show up. Sometimes it can feel like it is out of nowhere. But that is part of the potential and the blessing of eclipses. So Celeste is going to teach you how to tap into them. And we are going to have Janae Jones. I love Janae Jones of Spiritual Gangster Certified. I've followed her for years. I've loved her work. And now she's coming to Synchronicity University and looking specifically at the Yod aspect. I know the Yod is something that is a topic of fascination. It is a larger configuration uh, that some people have. It has uh, huge connotations, mystical understandings as well. She's going to help you to understand that singular major configuration, the power behind it and how to tap into it. So you can see here we have some incredible women astrologers who are going to be joining us. It happens to be all women this time and how wonderful is that? And each of them bringing their own unique perspective and gifts and brilliance to Synchronicity University. I'm so proud. You've got just a couple more weeks left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class. An unheard of rate for this caliber of astrologer at synchronicityuniversity.com. Links are in the description below. And finally, we are having a massive giveaway right about now. Um, and so you might want to check that out. I am putting the graphic up here somewhere and I did earlier as well. Uh, we're giving away classes, we're giving away books, and I'm really so excited about this. I happen to be home, which means I have access to books and wonderful postal services that aren't always available to me when it is that I'm traveling. And of course, uh, the five books that are out there with my name on it are for sale. They include Astrology Realized, that's my most popular book. It's rooted in understanding the history of astrology, but also reading a birth chart. Uh, the Body and the Cosmos is taking the ideas of Plato in Timaeus and applying them to an astrological sky. That is what I do because I'm a nerd and I love the ideas of Plato. Prayers to the Sky is sort of astrological magic light. Uh, it's an active way and another way to tap into the planets consciously uh, for how it is that they embody key parts of your soul. 
bringing them forward to your advantage. So this is a wonderful understanding of uh, the own mystical expression that we are and how you can amplify it for you. And the universe is wise and loving, looks at the nodes of the moon. That's where I go through the signs and the houses of the nodes uh, and help you to understand transits to the nodes as well. All of that is in the universe is wise and loving. And finally, a book that I co-wrote with my amazing friend, Yuridia Robles on Mayan astrology. So this is a really quick way to get a grasp of a whole other astrological system now, she is one of the world leaders in Mayan astrology. Uh, and this was me having many conversations with her as part of putting this book together. So it goes through the Mayan signs. And then there's a brief section on compatibility, helping you to understand how the different Mayan signs interact with each other. And so those are the five books available now at Synchronicity Publications. You get free gifts if you purchase books there or... They're available wherever books are sold, including on Amazon worldwide. And thank you for your support and love of my books. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your love. I'm so grateful for it. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.